multiple myeloma with quad therapy versus triplet therapy. Thereafter, we'll look into the relapsed refractory space with CAR-T and importance of IVIG with BCMA by specific antibody. Diving into our first study here, Equila. This particular study got a lot of traction and discussion in the social media world, but trying to figure out how this applies to our practice today, if you don't mind going over the study design and the results, typically for high-risk smoldering myeloma, you've defined it based on 20 to 20. It was slightly different in this study itself. Yeah, definitely. I think you've pulled out a very important study here, which in addition to this oral presentation at ASH, was shortly thereafter published in the New England Journal of Medicine. So folks who want to delve into the details can look at it there. This was for patients with smoldering multiple myeloma and used a probably slightly older set of criteria to identify patients at high risk. Those were folks with a serum M protein of three or more if they had IgA disease, if they had immunoparesis, which means, for example, if they have IgG myeloma, that the IgA and the IgM are suppressed, if they had a higher than normal serum involved to uninvolved free light chain ratio, but not at 100, which of course defines active myeloma, and if their clonal bone marrow plasma cells were 50 to less than 60%. This is a subgroup, which is a little bit different than the two 2020 criteria, as you pointed out. Patients were randomized either to active monitoring or to DARA monotherapy for 36 months. And the efficacy follow-up was until progression by the slim crab criteria with survival follow-up every six months, as you pointed out here. You can see from the slide that you've got here that there is a lower risk of progression to more active disease for the people who got daratumumab. Going out to five years, 63% of patients on DARA were progression-free versus about 40% of patients on active monitoring. If you look at the overall survival data, they're not mature because none of the arms have reached 50%, but there seems to be a small trend for people who got DARA to have better overall survival. We'll have to see longer follow-up. I think one of the concerns is that we have data showing that people who have DARA refractory disease are folks who have an inferior prognosis. But keep in mind that the DARA here was not until progression. So hopefully for those who relapse off of DARA, especially if it's at least a year after the DARA has been finished, they could still benefit from another anti-CD38 challenge, including either DARA or isatuximab. Bob, though this is a small patient population, even in my own practice up until today, I've historically treated these high-risk smoldering myeloma patients with monitoring rather than active treatment. But with significant PFS, importantly, OS trend, would it be now unethical not to treat these patients? We also have some data with lead in smoldering myeloma. We will have data from, at some point, the Ithaca study which was an even larger trial comparing Lendex to Isatuximab Lendex. We figure that the triplet will win out over the doublet. For my practice in an academic setting, we still feel that clinical trials are appropriate, but off trial, if you have patients who do not want to go on the study or could not be eligible, we still have a mixture of patients in this high-risk group, some of whom, if you monitor them, will have very stable biochemical parameters. A watch-and-wait approach is still reasonable as long as you've done advanced imaging, and I usually do that about once a year if they stay asymptomatic. My preference is whole body MRI because you don't have to worry about ionizing radiation and second cancer risk. The people I would treat for sure are those high-risk category whose numbers are going up. If their M protein is rising, if their involved to uninvolved free light chain ratio is rising, if their hemoglobin is slowly creeping downward, 
I think those are the people that I would definitely treat with either DARA monotherapy. I think LEN is appropriate as well. And hopefully down the road, we'll have CD38 with LEN DEX. Thank you. And again, these discussions are not to capture a sound bite of like, yes or no, this is not black and white. This is all gray. And in our community settings, monitoring very closely or jumping on treatment, we have to have that discussion with our patients.